In this lesson, we're going to look at something called the five-figure summary and then box plots. So, it says here the five-figure summary provides a concise summary of how the data is distributed. Reporting five numbers avoids the need to choose the best st summary statistic, like averages, for example, is a mean, mode, and median. You have to choose which one to use. Uh, this gives you lots of information, and eventually you can draw a diagram called a box plot with this. So, we're still sticking with Q1, Q2, and Q3 as before, but we're going to include the lowest number and the highest number in our sample. Um, so, let's have a look at how to create that. I make a five-figure summary for this data set here. So, uh, the lowest number is obviously 2, so we can write that down straight away. Lowest number is 2, and the highest number is 24. Again, we just take that from here. The rest is the same, working out Q1, Q2, and Q3. Now, I usually work out Q1 first, eh, sorry, Q2 first, the middle value. So, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Again, middle number is 8 in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's going to be there. That's my Q2. And then I'll break the other first section into halves. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be up and down here because there's 8 numbers there. And the other side, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's 8 numbers here. So 4 either side. Okay, now that all that's been done, we'll just have a look at it here. So, in between 13 and 15 is 14, in between 7 and 8 is 7.5, add them and divide by 2, or just say in the middle of 7 and 8 is 7.5, you know that. A wee bit harder, 19 and 22, um, various ways, you can add them both together uh, and get 41, and half 41 you get 20.5. Some people like to get the difference, which is 3, half it, which is 1.5, and go forwards 19 plus 1.5. So... There's your five-figure summary, which you can turn into something called a box plot. Now, let's have a wee quick look at what a box plot is. The box plot is a, a diagram to show the five-figure summary. It's called a, a box and a whisker diagram sometimes. Uh, this is your box here, and then these are, look like cat's whiskers. I suppose you need to use your imagination pretty well for that. But Q1, Q2, and Q3 are just vertical lines and the lowest number and the highest number are also vertical lines and you just draw lines between them and join the wee box up to create your box plot. Remember if you're doing it, it's uh, suitable scales need to be put in at the bottom. So here's an example here uh, for a, a test that was done quite a wee while ago now. The lowest number is 62, Q1, Q2 and Q3 are, are the numbers here and the highest value is 91. So my scales went up in fives. I started at 50, a bit lower than the 62 up to 100%. Um, percent. So I've drawn a vertical line, it's where I thought roughly 62 was. And because I don't really know where it is in the scale, I've written 62 up here, just to make sure, because if you didn't, somebody would be guessing it's roughly between 60 and 65. The same idea, some vertical lines here, and put the numbers at the top there, uh, from here, just so the person looking at that doesn't, if they don't know what it is, they can see quite clearly it's 91 is the highest mark. Now, box plot is really handy to review information. As you can see here, the information is split into quarters, so we can see the top 25%, the middle 50% is the box, and the bottom 25% the bit at the end here. Okay, so 25% of people has got between 62 and 76%, that was the lowest of the class. 50% the box bit got between 76 and 85, so 50% of people in this exam got an A. Um, and also 25% got an A, but they got an A band 1. So, all in, they were saying that 75% there quite clearly um, got an A, and some of these pupils would get an A as well, um, above 70%. So it's really handy to look at that. We tend to always concentrate in the box, though, saying that 50% um, of the information here um, gives a good summary of what's actually happened.